What up? This is Rob, and I am here with Chris, and what I'm up? also here with Dennis Seaton of <laughs> Musical Youth. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we all know the song. It went right into your head. I know you did. We'll get to that as soon as we can. There's so much to go over, so little time. Oh, my gosh. But, we, quit, Chris, you got to do the introduction. You got to let, uh, let us know who we got here today. If you don't know Dennis Seaton, you should. That's um, right. Na, 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 na. <laughs> oh, man. Brings back so many good memories. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so many good memories. We are oh. going to – we're going to talk right now really quick about uh, just how it started. I know it kind of started with, with um, a father yeah. put a group together, right? Yeah. And you came uh, in a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but I was there from the beginning, but I was banned from rehearsals, so – that's, that's it. That's really How do you get banned from rehearsal? Yeah, 1979, I got banned from rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I was at the very first rehearsal for the band. Yeah. Me and myself were best friends, so it was in the summer holidays. And uh, I went to the rehearsals and sat in on it and then came back the next day. And Junior's dad, Fred, said, you're not coming in. I don't want you in here. Stay outside. <laughs> so for 18 months, that's what I had to do. Stay outside of rehearsals. Oh, my goodness. But you were there. I was there. I was always there. Man. And you were, what, 15 at the time? Well, at the time when the band started, I was 14. 14, correct. Okay. Yeah, 14. That's right. When you finally got to hear the band. I was 15. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so... Here's right into it. Obviously, you, the band started it. You guys had a couple of songs that you had written first. Yeah. And um, you put that out, and then you guys got signed by MCA. Yeah. So in that 18 months when I was still going to rehearsals and everything, the band recorded um, uh, Political in General. That's at the double-A side they recorded which, with Fred singing lead. That was played on John Peel. John Peel, the legendary John Peel. Oh, yes. And that was heard by an A&R guy from, at the time, it was a and Records. Oh, yes, okay. And moving over to MCA, a guy named Charlie A. And he got in touch. And when he moved over, that's when he signed the band. Well, first and foremost, what he did say, he, they, had to, they had to find a young singer. <laughs> right. And they, obviously, I was at rehearsals from the very beginning, and I got the first shot. That's amazing. I know. So, and obviously a whirlwind of life because of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because then, you know, back in 1982, yeah. uh, now you're 15 years old, and yes. you guys ended up releasing the song Past the Ducci, which we all know and love. Yeah. And it's obviously, it's a pun off of uh, another song. It is indeed. And it was the Mighty Diamonds. Are, were they from London or were they from Jamaica? No, they, they were Jamaican. They were Jamaican. And theirs was past the Coochie. Yes. And then this song, and this is the question. Uh, this is the funny thing. I was on Twitter and I was being just my normal me saying, what is the Ducci and why do you pass it on the left-hand side? So I'm going to just start off asking that question. Because we always get that. Let's get that out of the way right now. <laughs> what if you could? I can get the Dutch part for you and show you the yeah, Dutch. You show them, <laughs> why do you pass it on the left-hand side? Well, why not? <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> we pass the country on the left, so we pass the Dutch on the left. <laughs> it was just I crazy. like it. <laughs> but it's a, the Dutch is a cooking pot. I've got one in the kitchen here now. My wife uses it. <laughs> in fact, we had some chicken in out of it last night. Fried chicken out of the Dutch pot. <laughs> nice. So, <laughs> so it's a Dutch oven? No, it's a pot. Okay, yeah. It's if you can pause the interview, I'll go and grab it. One sec. One sec. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh it. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, you know, it's not pre recorded. Look. Yes. Yes. We have the Ducci. Yes, we do. Now you got to do one thing for me. You got to pass it to the, the out. You got to pass it to the left hand side. Whoa. I wish I, we all had a Ducci. I we know. could like pass it through to each other. <laughs> There you go. This is a Dutch pot. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. 
That's oh a my god, one. that's so good. Okay, wash what? by my hands. <laughs> what oh. <did> we, uh... <laughs> the reason why it's called the Dutch pot. Yeah. It's manufactured in Holland. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chris, that makes total sense. That, oh my yeah. god, that's, that's hysterical. Awesome. Oh my gosh. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> what got you in to music? I mean, you're 14, you're young, you know, you you're in a band, you're having some fun. Did yeah. you start before that with mom and dad or the church or what got well, you going? Um, to be fair, when I was younger, um, I used to sing a lot. When okay. I was 10, 11, I was sing eight, nine, ten, I sang at school and I sang in uh, the musical of Joseph and his technical of dream card and I helped my school then. Yeah. That for you would have been if I was would have been year six. Okay. It's great for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that kind of whipped my appetite. So then when I met Junior in years seven, eight, years seven, great seventh mm -hmm. grade. Yeah. He got me into wanting to play music. So there's nobody really musical in my family. My dad played still pan, but I never really saw him play. But it was the first band I ever went to see live was Musical Youth, supporting uh, the beat. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough. Yeah. That's the band I saw live. That is cool. The, the, <laughs> the interesting thing, so what this is something that everybody needs to know is that, and I mean, everybody knows the song, but let's go deep, the deeper in the fact that you guys were up for a Grammy. Ah, oh, yeah. You see that above my head there? Yes. yes the nomination. <laughs> so you got a nomination for a Grammy yeah. Award. You yeah. lost to Culture Club. We did. <laughs> <laughs> no. I demand a recount. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what you got to take on this one is that you just lost Bob Marley. Yeah. Big time. And reggae in America wasn't really a popular genre. Yeah. You look right. at it. And the other um, nominees were Eurythmics. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's Big country. Good. Yeah. Big country is in there. So it, it, it was the invasions of the British, to be fair. Right, true. And, Big time. you know, um, Culture Club, we supported Culture Club. Oh, nice. In London. And that was the gig we did where we decided to go and try and do past the, do something past the Kutchie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the gig where the yeah. A&R guy said, this song, people are going nuts for it because we were playing the biggest gay club in London, which was heaven. Okay. Uh, 3,000, you know, gay and lesbians and LBQ, whatever. They just went crazy for the they song. They love that. They went nuts for it. And he said, is there anything you can do? He was like, well, we'll see what we can do. So then we went and recorded Kochi. And as we were in the studio, we said, well, what are we going to change it to? And it was literally Kochi Dutchy. <laughs> Simple as that. That works. That works. That's how, that's how we got the type. That's how we got the line. How does it feel when you got no food? <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about it. Right. You're talking about the fact that it's um, growing up poor, right? Yeah. That yeah we were the concept of what it is. And you're well, not so much. Off. I mean, we know I wouldn't go so deep as that. We just changed the lyric because we had to change the lyric. OK, so then explain and, the video to us because you're in a court and <laughs> like, what does that all mean? <laughs> right. So the video now was all shot on location in London, Lambeth Bridge. Okay. I mean, you start doing that now, you got no chance. <laughs> yeah. But it was shot in the summer holidays, and uh, it was Don Letts. Now, Don Letts did all did the Clash, big audio oh, yeah. dynamite, you know. And Don Don decided he's going to do this, and because of the backdrop of the House of Parliament, right? So the, his idea, he never really explained it to us much. He just said, "Look, I'm going to film you." Just do as I ask you to do, right? <laughs> you just say whatever. <laughs> oh, whatever. All right. You know? So we recorded. We, 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 we did a video. And the court scene is about us being chased by a school inspector. Okay. So the, school, the man you see falling off is the school inspector. And we're laughing at him. And he's taking us to court because he's, we've, he's accused us of tripping him up and making him fall over and hurt himself. Okay. <laughs> so but he used the backdrop of London in right. terms of... For him, it's political because at the time there's high unemployment in the UK. So, you know, yeah, that's that's that was his idea. 
That's crazy. That is funny how that goes. And then when you when you realize it, so we're talking about we had a video on MTV. It yeah. goes big, but here's the biggest part of it all. And another reason why I think this is so even maybe more today yeah. than ever. Um, musical youth was the very first African well black band artist. on MTV. Yeah, well, live in live. the studio. Yeah. yeah, that's the first you broke barriers. Yeah, we didn't even know that ourselves. <laughs> it's, not, it's only when you look back at it, you go, okay. Because at the time, MTV, because we used to watch MTV. Right. And at the time, MTV was playing mainly rock, not even Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, yes, had to say to Epic, had to say, look, if you don't play Michael Jackson, we're not giving you any of the other artists that we've got. Right. That was the kind of words that was going on. And I also found out myself about two years ago, um, Tom Petty. Actually, yeah, he actually told the record company, look, you got a band here. So I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. You, got a, you got the thumbs up from Tom Petty. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's amazing. I can't get carried away with it, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Tom Petty, I mean, come on. That's pretty, in my opinion, that's pretty phenomenal. To get the it's, thumbs up from Tom Petty. Yeah, I mean, when you find out people are championing your cause, you just look at it and go, wow. But going back to the Grammys, as I said, at the time, there wasn't a reggae genre for the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can look at the Grammys because the Grammys is, is the music industry's Oscars. You know, yeah. and you know, the Oscars go through, it's, it's, you haven't got enough genres. So the Grammys kind of changed all that and put the reggae section in there after we'd done because we met so many num- um, members who said, we voted for you. Yeah. We wanted you to win. So, you That's know, true. but it was going the other way. <laughs> so after the Grammys. Yes. What did you guys start on? Or what did you, what, what, which way did you guys go? Well, it was because the success of the band was such a shock to it was MCA at the time. It's now Universal. It was such a shock not just here in the UK, but in America. Because here, they didn't expect the single to do very well. Ah, oh. So when it jumped, because the charts used to come out on a Tuesday in this country, which the Tuesday, obviously they got the sales from the Saturday, the weekend, mm-hmm. the countdown. And they expected the track to reach 55, it got to number 26. And then a week later, it went to number one, which was really unusual. Wow. <laughs> it jumped. <laughs> I mean, the song that was before it was Fat Larry's Zoom. And when I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> wow. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom's a brilliant track. <laughs> you know, um, but I don't think because of the genre of music the band played, yeah. mm-hmm. you get the second album syndrome. And then they used to make you do albums the year after, not like they do now. Oh, wow. And they should have just left it. The American, American A&R guys, I think Irvin Azoff came in at the time and Joe Busby and they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to do. So they tried to Americanize the sound yeah. for the second album, which we had to go along because we, we're not experienced and we right. didn't have a manager strong enough to say, no, 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 no. And your kids. You, yeah. A group of kids. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> luckily right. our parents didn't manage us. <laughs> luckily. So, no, to speak. Gotcha. so it's a case of do you go with your, the person who pays the tune, pays the piper? Or do you go with, try and put your foot down? And if we'd have maybe put our foot down, because really, I can look back at it now with a business head on and say, well, the band never lost any money because the single, because then, you know, you have to pay back your royalties. We paid back the royalties to the record company within wow. one single. Wow. So just because of the worldwide hit, we were always in the black with the record company. We weren't in the red. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of the 80s artists, when they finally looked at their statements and went, whoa, what? <laughs> you know, some of them looked at it and went, I can't believe we spent all that money. Because they never felt like they physically spent the money. <laughs> yeah. They just did what they were told. Right. You know, they were told, oh, you can have this, you can have that. I mean, we must have had the cheapest number one party in the UK ever. <laughs> I'm serious. Wow. All we had to have was Kentucky, McDonald's. 
that was it for us. <laughs> Mickey D's, that's right. That was it for us. <laughs> Enough to have no champagne, no women. You had a Dutch pot, <laughs> so you were set. Yep, that's right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine, go on. So now let's bring us, well, to have a big gap, but what are you doing now? What's going on now? <laughs> wow, let's put it this way. Um, I think to, I stepped down from lead singer when I was 18. Okay. And I decided to go and, I was actually in Los Angeles for a year. I lived in Los Angeles, I was recording. I ended up recording with Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Stevie did a, two tracks on my solo album. And I was out there. That's why I ended up staying so long because my manager at the time, he had a heart attack. Oh. Ooh. In 87. And he, yeah. he ended up at Cedar Sinai Hospital. And I was his next of kin. <laughs> he's, oh. he's white Irish. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. and he, we're at Cedar Sinai. And we were up there in um, Franklin Studios, up there in La Brea, let's say in La Brea, up from Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, I drove, I had to drive him to Cedar Sinai. And we went past the hospital and he said, they said, there's a hospital. And I said, they didn't say that one. Anyway, when we got to the hospital, he, they actually took one look at him and took him in. They didn't, he didn't know he was having a heart attack. Well, I didn't know he was having a heart attack. All he was telling me was that his left arm was hurting and he was in pain. Yeah. And I just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Anyway, as it happens. Suck it up. You're fine. Let's get going. <laughs> as it happens, they told he was only 36. Wow. You're right. So <laughs> I'd just I'd just been on tour with him in Ireland for six months in Southern Ireland. And uh that 36 years old, heart attack. He was the youngest patient on that ward the okay. night before. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Next to his room in the ICU was Goldie Horn's mother. Oh, oh wow. right. So, get this story out. So he's there on his back, lying there, and he's in pain. He's up, he's got his blood, his drugs in, and he's 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 away with the fairies. So I've looked out his window and I could see this blonde, and I was gone. His name's Dave. I said, Dave, you want to see this blonde? She's gorgeous. He's, blah, blah, blah. He couldn't do nothing. Anyway, the next day I come bounding into the room. There's the blonde holding his hand. It's, it was Goldie Horn. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. No. Anyway, to this day, he doesn't know Goldie Horn was holding his hand. Oh, my he goodness. Wow. Was in the next room, and the nurses told him there's an English guy that's 36, and he's, he's not here on his own. <laughs> how, how amazing that she came over and did that, though. Yeah, no, it was nice of her. It was nice of her. That's a great story. I know. It is. Oh, my goodness. So then who, when I... Who, yeah, go ahead. So we recorded, we, we, because of his heart attack, he couldn't fly back. So we ended up staying. I was signed to Island Records by Chris Blackwell. And we ended up staying longer than we needed. Well, well, I, I could have stayed longer because I was only 19, 20 at the time. I was 20 at the time. Mm. And uh, I was able to stay for eight, nine months. And in that time, I was recording with um, another local writer. But Stevie had an operation on his finger, so we had to wait for him. And then once we got them done, um, I ended up going to see a band you might know. I went to their showcase, um, NWA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I actually- They on a good day. <laughs> wow. Well, it was just before the release of Straight Outta Compton. Yeah. So That's Island was, uh, yeah, Island were trying to sign them. Okay. Before he just got, got in. And I went to dinner with a, a, a lady named Kim Buey, who was the A&R guy, A&R guy, A&R person trying to sign them to Ireland. And it was me, Kim, Dre, Cube, Mello, and Easy in Italian restaurant for two hours. <laughs> and she's trying to find out what NWA stands for. And when we came in, she had Dre sat opposite me. So I said to Dre, because I'm I'm a musician. I'm a, if I don't see instruments, I'm not getting it. Yeah. So Dre says to me, I said, what do you play? He says, I play an ML, 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 MX, Mark II, <laughs> mixing the yeah. uh, table. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. So for two hours, she was trying to find out what NWA stood for. And she came out of there and she said, I know it stands for no whites allowed. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's exactly what she said. He stands for no whites allowed. I was like, okay, Kim. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, that just... must have been a great. That would have been a table that I would love to have been just a fly on a little wall on the wall just to listen to everything that went on in that in that little meeting. Well, right there. You got you got to you got to take it from this point of view, Chris. Is that they're looking at me, right? Now uh-huh. we're talking 1987, right? 88. Yeah. They're looking at me and hearing my accent, <laughs> and they're thinking, "What?" Because remember, they're from Compton, right? Yeah. They're like you're a black guy with an English accent. They probably yeah. never heard it before. No, so it was kind of it was new to them. Uh, so I got it. I understood it because I'd been in LA before, so I got it. Yeah, and um, I then ended up playing football every week with Rod Stewart and well, football soccer to you, but right. football. Yeah. With Rod Stewart and Andrew Ridgely. And we used to end up at the cat and fiddle drinking at the end of the game. <laughs> Play for five minutes. Okay, let's go to the cat and fiddle. Time to have a little fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And I got acquainted with Barney's Beanery very much as well. <laughs> that worked. I was in Los Angeles uh, 2019 doing some shows. And I, I hadn't, I, I came, I'd gone back for four days to do a show with Snoop called the Great American Smokeout Festival. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to, I got to, you know, and it, that was fun. But yeah, so before that, when I came back from Los Angeles, I ended up finishing up the solo album, releasing that, but never really happened. Then I lived in London for about four or five years, but I then came back home and put a band together. Oh, nice put a new band together and just gigged with that band. There you just go. Gig- just good. Did you go with that band? Did you just mainly do like little small venues and just go yeah. have a little fun and chill? Well, I learned, I did the six months in Ireland and then I did shows. I do shows everywhere, Chris. Anywhere there's a gig, I'll do a gig. Yeah, it's, I love it. It's what it is. You know, if you want to do a gig in a pub, hey, fantastic. If you want to do a gig in a big stadium, not a problem. And that's, that's when I decided to get in touch with Michael again. In mm-hmm. fact, it was Calvin first, but then Calvin got himself in trouble, so he didn't want to do it. So me and Michael went and did some shows because Junior wasn't quite ready and Patrick had passed away yeah. by then, which was unfortunate. Yeah. So, I mean, I did get to speak to him before he passed, which was good. We did right. have a good conversation. But yeah, it was a sad time. And I only just put it down to rock and roll. It's just rock and roll. You know, yeah, it's what it is, but yeah, I uh then decided obviously I was trying to keep my family, I didn't want to tour because I wanted to, I got married and had kids my, my own, so I just did. I start. I trained, I went to, I trained. What did I do first? Oh, oh. I worked for a car rental company, yeah, whilst okay. gigging, yeah. No, I could get out. But what happened was, I ended up, bu- I ended up buying and owning a rental company. <laughs> All right. Well, that was there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Work so, for it and taking it over. Yeah, yeah. So I then did that for about ten years, twelve years, thirteen years, something like that. And then I went to university. I went to went to university at thirty-seven and did a degree. Go on. I know you're going to ask me, what did you do your degree in? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. What do you think I did my degree in? Got to be music. Yeah. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> A rocket scientist. <laughs> Name's not Brian May. <laughs> oh. So I, I did that. And then I decided, no, I can't just have a degree. So I went and did my master's in music so i've got a musicology master's in music okay i suppose the next step wow. from that to be a doctor professor so i suppose this was all for me this wasn't for anybody else this was just for me. right and because I, I wanted to pass the knowledge on mm. my experience right but in, in in this country they need you to have the papers whereas if i was living in america they'd just say, ah come in we'll sort you out blah 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 i know that would have happened Right. That's how that's how America works. Right. You got the knowledge. We could use your skill. We'll take that knowledge because we can run with it. 
There you yeah. go. Also, I wanted to see how I do research for writing a book because I'm now, I'm at that age now when I'm ready to write the book. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Before I lose it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that starts March 2nd, 2021. Nice. That's right. That's <laughs> awesome. And then there will be the uh, movie, movie biopic. I don't know about that. Who's going to play to be. Actually, in, you say that. I've, actually, <laughs> I've actually got the script for the play that we had. There's a play, a music youth play. I do have the script. You have a play. Yeah, there was a play, a music youth play. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, where is that? Is it out anywhere? Can we see it? No, you can't see the play. Oh, man. <laughs> it ran for a week in Birmingham, and then it ran for another week in Nottingham, and then they ran out of money. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a starting point for a script to do the yeah. So I've just got to work on some, make some phone calls and knock some doors and see what I can do. There you go. You'll get it done. You'll get it done. We'll just we'll call your plan, right? Cube's all down for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it was easy because yeah. there's hard decisions to make. Mm -hmm. uh, and people look at it and go, is, is that what you're doing that? No. I've, music has always been my baseline. Right. But there comes a time when you have to earn a living and little did I know. And here's the thing. When I said that we never owed the record company any money, little did I know that MCA hadn't been paying us like they should have been. Uh, so they didn't pay us our full royalties for 18 years. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And this, this all came to a head um, in so much as, when when Pastor Dutchie ended up on the wedding singer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It ended up on wedding the wedding singer, which at the time was the best selling musical soundtrack of that year. And I phoned up the I phoned up Universal at the time. And this the and all uh, bear this in mind, I've already set up my rental company. Yeah. And I worked out that a million pounds doesn't get you a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so when I phoned up the record company, the receptionist said, well, there's no money. And I said, I actually didn't phone about money because I didn't think there was any money to be had because we hadn't been paid. Yeah. yeah. So that, I thought, well, hold on, what's she on about money for? I didn't ask about money. Yeah. And it was then my, my old manager, Dave, who had the heart attack, he phoned me up and said, you must be quite happy now. I was like, what for? He said, well, wedding singer. What are you on about? He said, you haven't been paid a royalty? No. Right. <laughs> he, went and, he went and asked them the question. They then paid us a five-figure sum each. Yeah. Wow. And I, and I said, well, where does this come from then? <laughs> yeah. Where does this money come from? Because I was told there's no money here. So how long's it? One, this is my businessman's head. How long has this money been here? And yeah. what, about the, what about the interest on the money that you've paid on this? So I was just going to ask. <laughs> and they decided they didn't want to pay any interest. <laughs> we should take that money and go, what? Hold on a minute. Wow. So then we had to go and then get everybody together. Obviously, Patrick's mom had to represent his estate. Right. And um, it turns out they owed us quite considerably more than what they were paying out. Oh, yeah. But, but, here's the but. With the statutes of limitations going back six years only, oh. whilst we didn't get paid for eighteen years, we only got paid for six years. Yeah, so we kept the other twelve. Oh, which it kind of stuck in my throat. But yeah, something's better than nothing. But still, what what all they did was rob kids. That's all I say. Uh, yeah, because we, we were all minors. We didn't know. You know the excuses that came out was, "Oh, we didn't have your address." Well, my mom still lives in the same house that she's always lived in. <laughs> she's still there. <laughs> she's still only there. been there for, so, you know, 40 is, years, but. Yeah. So you, you, you take that one on the chin and then in investigating that, we found out that some shenanigans had gone on with our lawyer and our manager. And it, was, it could only have been them two because they're the only ones who could have got that close. Yeah. But when we approached the old lawyer, he kind of, Put up shop he shut up shop and said uh you have to need to speak to my lawyers i'm like hold on you represented us and we paid you 
Yeah. Well, something's gone on with our publishing and there was a big meeting about who's got a piece of the publishing for Dutchie and they should have included us and they never did. Um, because nobody knew about Pastor Kutchie really until Pastor yeah. Dutchie. Right. Yeah. So, and I've, oh, I've got files. So where do you stand now? Do you still, um, do you have rights to the song? Are you? Well, I still use it. I, I can perform it anytime I want, but it's still a, still a nagging doubt about why we shouldn't be allowed to have some of the royalties. Right. Because we're not asking, we wasn't asking for all of it. We're just asking for something like 10, 15%. Yeah. Because what turned people on to pass the Kutchie was past the Dutchie. You guys, exactly. you're more than the same age as me. You would have known about past the Kutchie until you heard about past the Dutchie because you're trying to work out ways to come from. Right. Yeah. So, and think about it. People say to me, oh, but it's about drugs. Think about this. Just think about what you're saying. You've got an 11 year old to a 15 year old. Right. How are they going to be thinking about drugs? What do you think would have happened to the radio stations? <laughs> right. Well, exactly. You know, and I know in your side of the world, they actually thought that Dutch pot, we were singing about cooking pot. <laughs> right. Cook, you know, I'm t- exactly. <laughs> putting it in a big, burn up some and drink it. <laughs> but then we're saying eating it. You drink bush tea. <laughs> when I heard that, I, I just fell on the floor laughing, literally fell on the floor laughing. Yeah. They talk, we, they, people thought we were talking about cooking pot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good well it's I good. didn't really even like get to that point till way much later when I got older because I was young you know at yeah. the time. and um, so I didn't even consider me because I was young like you you know yeah. so and, for you uh, guys then, it was just, you? you know what the groove was good the happiness was good you know all about yeah. that it was a kooky little video and I don't know it just it just made you feel happy yeah. well I know because we did some shows in New York and, when we, and we did shows in LA right I think the night before the Grammys, we went to see Madness, mm. at the palace up there on Vine. Wow. And we also did some shows. We did some shows with Donna Summer as well. Okay. But we used to do matinee shows, right? So when I was 17, we were there in LA and we played the Beverly Hill Theater. And uh, we used to do a matinee show for under, under 14s, under 15s or under 16s, and then an evening show for the adults. So we used to do two shows in one day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and um, the first time, that's my daughter there. <laughs> the first <laughs> time, we, we had um, Irene Cara. Oh, wow. Yeah, Irene Cara had won the Grammy for Best Lead Female Vocalist for that year for yeah. fame and what a feeling. Yep. She came on stage and sang with us because she sang on the second album on a track called 16. But a record company would not let, let her, because she, she sang on it. We've got the recording with her voice on it, but the, the, the one that was released was with Jody Watley's voice. Wow. <laughs> From Shalimar. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God. All these names you're bringing I up. I'm sitting here going, I remember them. I remember them. It sounds like I'm name dropping, but I'm not. It's just no, what happened. happened, right? No. And, and Donna Summer. Well, we actually, when we flew back from Los Angeles, we were actually doing a film with Mr. T. Um, and it was the taxis and- DC it, Taxi. That's it. That's yep. it. Oh boy. We were supposed to be in that <laughs> film. Really? We were supposed, we were actually down there in Los Angeles and I remember, never forget it because we flew out there and it, because of the jet lag, we were up at four o'clock in the morning watching cartoons. Well, in this country, we had to wait till Saturday morning to watch cartoons and we'd get like half an hour. Yep, <laughs> right. Like non-stop cartoons. So we were like, wow, cartoons. <laughs> anyway, um, when we got to Los Angeles, all everybody kept saying to us all through the day, it was, it never rains in California. It never rains in California. That's all they ever said. Anyway, came to do the filming on the night. We met Mr. T and the Barabbas twins. We were down on the set in um, Universal and it rained and rained and rained and rained and kept raining and kept raining. They couldn't even get a gap to do our part, which was on the side of the street. <laughs> wow. So on the way back from that, that we uh, ended up, we got a call from Donna Summer's manager who said Donna wants to record with the band. And our manager put the phone down because he thought the guy was lying. 
<laughs> so the guy phoned back and he said, no, no, I'm not lying. Anyway, he, um, hold on. yeah, we're almost there. He, we landed, we flew to New York on the way back, recorded the vocals with Michael O'Marty and then went back to London. And that's when we found out that Donna went and did her vocal and they were going to fly us over to New York via Concord, but I think they looked at the price and said, mm -mm. <laughs> let Donna fly the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up helping Donna Summer bring her career back in the UK and America with um, Unconditional Love. Yeah. Mm. So uh, we kind of have to uh, start to wind this up. But yeah, I'm, that's right. talking forever. That's cool. I'm just in awe. So but, going yeah. Back, yeah, so when, when, well, let's, let's kind of, where are we heading from here? Well, you got some plans. Yeah. You got some plans on what you're going to do next? What's, what's the I'm next? I'm writing book? a book so we can get a movie. Well, we know the book. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've got a tour scheduled. I'm on tour with um, Lost 80s. Okay. Uh, and I did that. I did a couple of shows back in 2019. And I've got some shows coming up. And we'll have to, you'll have to hook up. But I'll be out there for about five weeks in LA on the West oh, really? Coast. really? Yeah. Road trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah so my wife my daughter and uh my keyboard player he'll come out and we, we we've got a pickup band in la that we, we work with yeah so we do we do that to her oh let us know give you send me yeah. that information we won't come down yeah, see it'd be fun. i'm looking hopefully hopefully because it got cancelled last year obviously right and uh I'm glad to see you guys are well we're That's in lockdown here fantastic oh yes yeah. So we've released an album now called When Reggae Was King. Okay. That's out online through some records. And that's, we've actually done a 2020 version of Past the Duchy. Okay. It's called Past the Duchy 2020 Lockdown Version. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like it. <laughs> so uh, so it, my son plays trumpet with the band. So that's, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. It's like, it's just cool. We uh, we decided that we got to stick with the reggae music and push it and keep pushing it because it's something yeah, in our, our heart and passion. I'm just about to start. We're actually starting to record the new album now, so we'll see how we get yeah. out. So we're definitely. When do you think, when's that going to come out? That's what I want to know. Which one? The new album. Well, we got when reggae was king. That's out now online with Thump Records. And the next album probably won't be, well, we'll get it recorded this year and get it ready for later in the year, I hope. Cool. I've done a, 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 I've also got a reggae version of Islands in the Stream at the moment. So we'll see how Oh we my get. gosh. So I'm a big Bee Gees fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be a couple of Bee Gees tracks on there. It's funny enough. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh my gosh. That's the, great. Because he's still battle. going, right? He's, they're going to do a movie about them, I think, too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they have to. I mean, it's just some classic songs. Every time I, you know, to love somebody. That's wow. another one. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, De Dennis and I just became best friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dennis. <laughs> we can we were on a PG level. I've got to say bye to my wife. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's Robin's <laughs> voice. Hello. How you doing? Hello. Spending some time. I'm not All stupid. Right. They needed to see the Dutch part. <laughs> Get him! Get him! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So. We 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 absolutely appreciate you coming on our show. No um, this has okay. been a thrill. I, I I actually spent a lot of the the whole interview just in awe that I'm talking to you. Oh, which please. is cool and then what's neat is you're so personable and I, and that's how i you know you you actually respond to people on twitter oh, yeah. and you're just you know just a a great human being and that you you're uh you're genuine and i just appreciate you coming on the show and i can't wait when you come out here to yeah, yeah. you know to california we want to come oh, see yeah. you that's fine we'll hang out with you we'll pass the, we'll pass the dutch pot we'll we'll eat some good stuff <laughs> talk Bye. about the Bee Gees. <laughs> yeah i'll play you some of the tracks because we would have really recorded them. Absolutely. I mean, the band, uh, I wanted to bring the band out, but the visas cost so much. It's just, yeah. Your your work system is tough. Oh, tough. it's yeah. out here. It's a I have, to go down, I have to make a personal visit to your embassy in, in London to wow. get my visa. Because you have to prove, yeah? So yeah. when I get there, 
they're all the, the guy, you know, they want to do an interview, that you gotta prove it. So the guy gets me up, he looks on Wikipedia and he goes, Oh, this kid, I know that band. I got a sign in my head. I'm like, listen, you know how serious this is right now. <laughs> I'm trying to get a working visa. <laughs> and you're and you're looking at Wikipedia. This is the US Embassy. You're looking at Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep my lips sealed on that one. I mean, we got it, you know. <laughs> it's true. That, well, stamped approved right then and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Amen. True. Yeah, but it's, oh, oh my gosh. Well, again, thank you. What up, plus? Well, well, we used to be what up, plus. We were what up now because we're international. That's yeah. right. Officially, we yeah. are. We're just. <laughs> this has been so cool. <laughs> and we can't wait to see you soon, man. When you come out here, and uh, man, we appreciate you. And we'll be in touch. I'm gonna keep connected with you uh, about the book. Um, just talk to you about some of my thoughts. Maybe you can take some of my thoughts and run with it because you're already yeah, in the you're, industry. You're gonna pressure me now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one more quick question, if that's all right, Rob. Do we have a minute? Yeah, we got a minute. Hey. What would you recommend for a young person that's interested in possibly getting into the music business? Um, it totally depends what they want to do. If they're okay. playing an instrument and they're, it, it's, there's a number of things. I mean, now it's totally different, Chris, as you know. Mm -hmm. You don't need the record companies now. Right. To get your yeah. profile. But then they still have that powerhouse of pushing the track. It's still the same digital, but you have to be able to play live. See, yeah, in America, you've always had the live musicians. You've always gone to live gigs in America. Yeah. In this country, you've got certain artists are studio artists mm -hmm. or they're live artists or they're both. I come from the school of you have to be both. Gotcha. You to be both. So you have to be able to perform, record, perform. So even in my writing process, I'm thinking, how can I perform this song live? Where now with all the technology. Right. You can pull all them things in. And even I sometimes think, oh, too much technology. I want to feel it. Yeah. You know, I want to hear a slight mistake. I want to hear a slight off key because the performance was right. Yeah. So perfection, 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 perfection. You know, I want to hear some guitars. I want to hear that live brass. And that's just me. Okay. But, you know, if I could point to somebody like Adele and Amy Winehouse, Amy, Fantastic vocals, brilliant yeah. album, five-time Grammy winner. Live? Pfft, no. Ha, yeah. No. Yep. And as much as I love Adele and I've got all her albums, not somebody I want to get up and go and see live. No disrespect. I, yeah. I appreciate it. On the other hand, you get the greats like Stevie, even Michael. Yeah. You know, Lionel Richie. You know, them guys, Paul McCartney, them guys performed. They love playing live. People yeah, all yeah. say, well, why, why, why is the Rolling Stones still going? Because that's all they know. That's, that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> why should they stop? They shouldn't. <laughs> Nothing to do with you. <laughs> if you were in their shoes, you'd do the same thing. Yeah. And if you're performing wow. in your 70s, you should be happy. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Keith Richards is like 196, <laughs> right? He's got a fake. He's got a fake birth certificate. <laughs> That's right. He's a vampire. Let's be honest yeah. here. You know. I think he's a Greek god, and he's Amen. really been alive <laughs> before Christ. You know. I mean, it's, oh. <laughs> it's, what you got to understand—it's the music that's keeping them going. It keeps yeah. them singing. Absolutely. Yeah. he was a saxophonist. He got, he played his last gig at ninety-four. Wow. He couldn't hear shit, <laughs> but <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing from memory, but to do it, if I'm doing a gig at 90, I'm happy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's amazing. He, he, when he was in his 90s, he wasn't thinking, somebody phoned him and said, I got a gig for you next year. He wasn't thinking, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> Put it in the diary. Yeah. Good for him. I've got his diaries from the Musicians Union from 1938. Wow. Exactly. I know I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's Boy, you just have, you probably just have books or three or seven movies just from <laughs> reading those. Yeah. And he's a jazz musician. So you couldn't talk to him about 
you know, I think he he was one of the first people to book Bob Marley in Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, That's amazing. Yeah. But there you go. It's it's totally I say it's totally different. The music business is the music business. That's that yeah. goes without saying. But the way they look at it now is, you know, they coined that ref, the, the, they coined the phrase 360 deal, where the record company now has access to all of it. Where yeah, me wow. as an 80s artist, they only have access to the records and the publishing, where I control my um, merchandise, yeah, and the naming rights. That's right. what we control and that's what we own. But now artists have to give up a piece of everything. Yeah unfortunately, but that's the deals because they all want to get involved in live gigs now because that's where the money is. The live gigs, well, downloads is all right, but it's the world tours that generates all that. It's, and, and what stopped it now? The pandemic stopped it. Yeah. It did. Boy, did They're it. Trying to recreate themselves again. Yeah, I mean, people talk about online gigs, but it's not the same. No. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I was fortunate. I managed to. I actually did a gig for the U.S. Navy. Sat in my living room here. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I look at it and go, "What? <laughs> the places you end up." But um, you, you got to enjoy it. First and foremost, you got to have the love and the passion. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going into the music business thinking I'm, I'm going to make a lot of money, that's not the that's not the way to do it. Let the work speak for itself, and you've always got to have the songs. Yeah. You've always got, it always boils back to, you could have the best vocalist, you could have the biggest producer, but if you haven't got the songs, that's where the problem comes. Yeah. On top of that, who's looking after you management wise? Right. And I don't advocate parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you also learned that uh, management can be tough, even if it's not parents. Well, it's the choice of managers. Right. I always find that those who talk a lot mm, tend not to produce it. Right. Those who partly get on, you know, they make that phone call. Yeah. Uh, I mean, something I was discussing with my daughter because she, she's, she's studying music, but she's looking more to the management side. And I said, well, you can look after me. You can look after my stuff and see how you get on. It's a, it's a trial for her. She's got a name that she can tap a door with. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Even me knowing what I know, I wouldn't manage her. Yeah. Because I'm her dad. Yeah. And, in, in, in the music industry, the successful artists whose parents look after them doesn't bode well. <laughs> Does not bode well. Right. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson is the biggest. Right. Beyonce had to get rid of her dad. Right. Britney's not, trying to get hers. Well, look, it's not because Beyonce didn't love her dad. Right. But how does she get the break? How does she separate? Right. How can you separate? Yeah, you got to. You're trying to get away from it and you're looking at... <laughs> you know, so history and so that's just 10 percent of that so remember the music's got to be right first the artist has got to have the songs yeah. then you're going to have the business behind the music that way you get the full shaban but as i said as i said if you're going into it to just about making money it's not going to happen gotcha because the money's going to throw you somebody could throw money at you it doesn't matter how much money they spend if the song's not any good Right. And if you record at all, I don't know if you any of you record, but when you're recording in the studio, no song sounds like I'm recording this because I don't think it's going to be a hit. <laughs> yeah. True. Nobody thinks their song is not a hit. Well, exactly. But if the song is, I sit here talking to you now, what are we, 38, 39 years down the road? Yeah. And to this Just day, a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> to this day, with the band, I know that we never ever said, we want to have a number one song. We want to have a worldwide hit. All we wanted to do was just play to the best of our ability. That was it. Mm. The fact that it took off, so, so be it. Yeah. We were dealing with the fallout. We weren't coached. We were just put in front of a camera. You talk. We asked the questions. You talk. What? <laughs> okay. All right. And, you know, we did Saturday Night Live, which for me is like, wow. And people look at us, look at me and go, you did Saturday Night Live? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you know, Joe, people are on it when Joe Pisco. Oh, I was going to say that if people are chasing that right now, you know, it's kind of the YouTube thing. Everybody's looking for that viral view video yeah, that yeah. makes the money, right? And it, uh -huh. it goes and goes and goes and goes. It's the same thing. What like music was is like 
you want that viral song, but you guys were different. You were looking for, it's actually a lot about what our show is about. Is okay. We were about, you know, we're just having fun and interviewing amazing people. And, and just honestly, it's filling our bucket. We kind of created this because we were bored and we're yeah. like, Hey, we can't go out anywhere. <laughs> and, and so we were a couple of goofy big guys that like to make fun of ourselves. Literally. And then, <laughs> and so we created a YouTube channel and we, you know, if it goes viral, it happens, but we were like more, Hey, we're just trying to do something that's fun. It fills our bucket. And that seems to be what you were saying yourself as you were, playing the music for the music more than it was for the money or, or anything like that. The money was, we, we never, I've, I've looked after, I've, I've looked after some people where I've said, look, I'll, I'll, I'll look after you. I'll come in the minute. And I've got this from Peter Waterman. The minute people start talking about money, what is your motive here? Is your motive the craft or is it the money? Right. Because, Everybody in the music business has to pay their dues. Every, there's no shortcut. And for those who have the shortcuts, I'll just give you American Idol. You know, them are shortcuts. Right. Because you're not getting a career in this country, especially out of uh, them TV reality shows, The Voice. In America, you got more than enough people that you can make a success. Yeah. 300 million people. <clears throat> You just take half a percent of that to buy your single. You're on TV for X amount of time. But then where do you go from there? Because you still have to have the songs. <laughs> yeah. You, you can have the greatest voice and you still have to have the songs. Look, right. Aretha Franklin is one of the greatest voice, wow. female voices ever. Absolutely. It Amen. didn't happen for Aretha from the beginning. It took right. Muscle Shoals and then her to say, I like this. And remember then black and white really didn't mix. And it would have been funny for her as well. So you think of the mentality on it. Now, you've still got the greatest voice ever. But was she the most successful? No. Mm. You got to look at Whitney, who comes behind her. Then you got to look at Mariah, who comes. And they now have a different outfit set. And even they, from the 80s, still performed. They went on tour and performed. Yeah. They never had a problem with it. It's only when you get to the 2000s and 90s, like Adele, and they don't want a tour. <laughs> they don't want a tour. They want to stop back in their house. And... But that's unfortunate. That's how it goes. Right. But I go back to it. Anybody who's wanting to come into it, the music business is still good, but you have to have the songs. And I tell any, any artist that comes to me for advice and, yeah, what have you got? Let's have a look. There's no hard and fast rule. Let's get, it, let's get it right. As musical youth, it's, we never ever thought this song was going to be what it was. Right. We never sat in the studio and went, this is going to be a hit. <laughs> like that it was a total shock. Yeah. The word we use is organic. Mm -hmm. It's organic. So that means the roots go deep. Yeah. Correct. The roots go deep. So you guys here now doing this, for you, it's like we're goofing about and we're having fun goofing about. Yeah. You sent out a message. Uh, nobody he's not going to come back to you well if you don't ask you don't get do you <laughs> exactly that's that's True. i'm going to write a book purely about that you know <laughs> i i've i've uh, i've purely i've ridden in private jets just because i asked right I've, yeah. I've gotten into sporting events into luxury suites just because i asked didn't exactly. pay for it I mean, there's a million things that i can say and i think that's that's a true tried and true thing is that what's the answer if you don't ask well, it's no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Automatic. Boom. Boom. That's, you're done. Well, yeah. So I hope I'm, I mean, I'm way over time, but you know, it's good. You can always come back to me another time if you want, as long as I've got time. Absolutely. You know, and I appreciate the time that you gave us. So that is fun. Yeah, hey, thank I mean, you. obviously we edited and all that stuff, but I just, I'm so thrilled we got to meet. And uh, I, I get, can't wait to come down and meet you when you come out to LA. Yeah, which part are you in now? I'm in Northern California, but again, the right. Sacramento. Sacramento. Right. Sacramento. Yes. yes. Okay. Is that there by, um, hold on. How far is it? San Jose? Around that way? We're further up in the okay. Northern Right. right. So uh, Lake Tahoe is kind of a big yes. area. I played Lake Tahoe back in 2007. <laughs> okay. Wow. I yeah. drove, we drove from Lake Tahoe to San Jose, 10 yeah. hours. You would come through where we live. Yeah. Yeah. 
But getting to LA, I mean, it's a Southwest flight that's probably forty dollars anyway. Yeah, we play. <laughs> I know we play up there in San Jose, near San Jose. So we're probably close further up. When we're further up, I'll let you know. I think it's the Mountain Winery. That's the one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that place is beautiful. Is that it is. is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up yeah, at yeah. seventeen. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Oh my gosh! Well, we're gonna come see you. Yeah, we're, we're, no fans are but forever connecting, and uh, uh, can't wait. And we'll continue to promote you. Anything that you do, and uh, man, what a what an awesome interview! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Oh, I didn't bore you. Oh man! So what up, what up? Bob and Chris? Dennis, what up? Musical youth past the the Ducci, and we know. Why not? Just pass it to the left-hand side. That's why you do it. That's the that's right. answer. Now, you, now you've seen a duchy. I've seen that's it. That's right. You've seen the duchy. <laughs> Thank you once again. We will talk to you soon. Best into the world for you in the future. Thank you again so much. What up? What okay. up?